Hi, David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to illustrate how we estimate volatility based on history. Volatility comes in different flavors and definitions. This is the simplest form of volatility. So we can call this moving average volatility or simple historical volatility. So in order to estimate volatility based on history, the first thing we need is a historical series of prices. And so for this example, I've pulled Google's price close for the last 21 days. This is as of February 2nd, 2010. So we Google's price closed at 531.12. And now I have a short window or series of price closes going back to the beginning of 2010. So it's really only 21 prices. And so it's a short window that's shorter than we typically would do. We would typically use a year or three years. This is just for illustration. Now, if we have the price closes, our first step is to compute the daily returns. And specifically, we're going to use daily log return. So if we look at this formula here, it's pretty simple. It's the natural log of this price divided by the previous day's price. This is also sometimes called a wealth ratio, but we're taking the natural log of the relative price change. And that is a continuously compounded return. So that means we have a series of daily log returns. We have 21 prices. That means we have 20 daily log returns. Now we could use the technically correct formula to calculate variance for that window. Here's the formula for variance. This is a sample variance. Sigma squared indicates variance. N is today and M would be the number of days we have in our window. In this case, we have 20 days. Now, we're not going to use this formula. I'm going to show you the formula we tend to use in practice when we have short periods like this, daily returns, and that's the formula in yellow. There are two key simplifications here. The first is that the average daily log return, that's mu bar here, is assumed to be zero. So for short, we assume in daily returns that the average daily return is near enough to zero that we can round off to zero and this drops out. And then what we have here, this m minus one, technically gives us the sample variance estimate, or it's an estimator. And we're just going to use, instead of m minus 1, we're going to use m and calculate really what would be a population variance. So with that change, we end up with the formula in yellow, which is much simpler. And we can even state it fairly straightforwardly. Here we have sigma squared as the variance. Our variance estimate is simply the average squared return in the window. So that's given in yellow here. If we just go back here, look at our first daily log return, then all we're going to do here in yellow is we square it. See, that's a the daily return squared. And we can even call that a daily variance estimate, such that we now have a series of 20 daily variance estimates. And you'll notice here, all I need to do is calculate the average. So what I'm going to do is just collapse this series just so we can see the, uh, summation, the summary statistics here. So I've still got a series of 20 daily variances, but I've just collapsed the middle. So here's daily variances here in a column. And if I come down here and notice, I just take the average. By doing this here, what I've done, I'm gonna even color code it just to indicate, I've matched up, I've applied this formula. I have now here a daily variance of 0.03%, which is really just the average of the squared returns in my short window. That's sigma squared, which is the variance. So I take the square root of that to get the average daily standard deviation estimate. And I can call that a daily volatility. And the last thing I might do is annualize that because again this is just a daily volatility so what I can do there is apply the square root rule and I multiply that daily standard deviation by the square root of 250 that applies the square root rule I've made a couple of assumptions there that may not be realistic so that may not be accurate but we do it we often do it in practice and what I end up here is an annualized standard deviation 
which we can call the volatility. And you'll notice it's 28.45%. So just to recap how I got that, my volatility is an annualized standard deviation. It was the daily volatility or daily standard deviation multiplied by the square root of 250. My daily volatility was the square root of my daily variance estimate, which in turn, my daily variance estimate was simply the average squared return in my window of 20 returns where I made the simplifying assumption that the average return, the average daily return was zero. And so that's how I calculate my simple or moving average historical volatility, in this case based on a short window of 20 days. I'll just say two things about the weaknesses of that. First, this volatility doesn't really care if Google jumps up or falls down. So just to illustrate how ridiculous that could be, Google's price could be jumping up, 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 and that can still create a high volatility. And we may not be concerned about volatility in the upside, but this volatility is really indifferent to an up or down move. Secondly, if I expand this out, the other thing this simple historical volatility does is really it treats all of these daily log returns in the series with an equal weight. So we could even call this equally weighted moving average volatility. And that is sort of dubious because here we are at today, February 3rd, and we're giving an equal weight to yesterday as we are to the beginning of our series. And we may not feel that's true. We may feel volatility, the more recent data is more relevant to us. But in this simple approach, remember it's an average of squared returns, all of the returns get an equal weight, which is considered to be a weakness. So that's a summary of historical or moving average volatility. David Harper, The Bionic Turtle, thanks for your time.